Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Donate a Garden. And today we're going to be talking about saving a ton of money by starting perennials from seed. Now, those of you who have followed me know that I kind of run back and forth on a teeter-totter of saving money versus finding really good deals. And one of the best ways to save on your gardening experience is to start lots of plants by seed. And I've done lots of annuals in the past. I've done tons of cut flowers to show you all, but today I wanted to focus on starting perennials from seed. Now starting perennials from seed is definitely not an instant gratification situation. It can take up to a couple of years for the perennials to begin flowering, but you can save a ton of money if you have a little bit of patience. So we're gonna start several varieties of perennials by seed. We're gonna talk about them as well as some other ones that I've started from seed in my garden. And we're gonna talk about what you can do to help yourself along the way. All right, so I actually feel really behind on videos as of late, I've been sick. Yeah, it just, it feels like just a really bad head cold. And um, I'm at that point where I'm so stuffed up where I talk, but I can like hear myself echoing in my head. And so I took a couple of days off of filming videos, which is nice, but also stressful <laughs> because that means I'm falling behind. But this is a project that I've been wanting um, to get going for quite a while. I feel like I'm starting a little bit late in the season. So I'm not sure if all of these perennials I'm starting from seed are gonna get out before the tough part of the winter hits. They might be ones that I kind of overwinter inside under my grow lights. Now you can start lots of perennials um, by seed outdoors. I don't do that because I'm a control freak and I prefer to start perennials inside where I can see the amount that I'm starting, where I can have them in the, you know, grow them and be able to put them in the exact place they want. I'm just kind of control freak on that way. And so everything I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be starting them in seed trays today and they're going to be going under the grow lights within my house. Like I said, I'm starting kind of late. I probably should have started at the beginning of September and now we're kind of mid to end of September and um, perennials take a lot longer to really get going. They really don't pick up as fast on growing as other things like annuals do. Um, zinnias, which is an annual, are so satisfying because they grow so quickly. That is not going to be the case for the perennials. I'm going to be in it for a long haul. Now each seed is going to have its own kind of germination requirements, lighting requirements, uh, temperature requirements. Every seed is a little bit different. So I do encourage you once you get your seed packets to go ahead and read through them. Note which ones need to have a cold period of time. They might need to be put in the refrigerator three to four weeks and then brought out and then germinated or uh, sowed at that time. Some can just go directly into the soil. Some want to be covered because they don't want any light. Some want to be surface zone because they do need light. So it's really important to go through each of your seed packets, really figure out what each seed needs and follow it to a T. Now perennials are something that I've definitely been focusing more on in my garden. I started a true perennial bed on the side of the house and I've been working more and more perennials throughout my garden. However, at the nurseries that I shop at in my zone 8A in North Texas, perennials are expensive. And there's an understanding why, because these are forever plants. Perennials are a plant that may die back each year, but come back each year. And um, it's going to go typically die back in the winter. Some of them will stay green, some of them won't, and then it will produce year after year flowers for you. Whereas an annual is something that um, you grow and you plant out in the spring and then it's gone over the winter and it does not return for the next year. So perennials are a little bit more of a monetary investment, but they're gonna give you more bang for your buck over time. Now, a lot of the varieties I'm starting today are things that I've started before or that I've grown in my garden before. And then the other half are gonna be brand new to me and I'm really excited to get started on them. So I'm going to go ahead and start sewing all of these and I'll talk about each variety and show pictures of them as we're sewing them. So I'm starting with just a basic potting soil. I like to work with dry potting soil. I know that that is not what most gardeners do, but this is what works really well for me. And I go ahead and fill up my containers dry and then I add water later on, which they wick up from the bottom. And I find that um, this is just less messy because I sow most of my seeds inside. And then I think it also works really well for the um, process. You can certainly use a seed starting mix, and I do sometimes as well, especially when I'm starting really small seeds, something like Lysanthus. 
um, but most of the time I just use a basic potting soil. The potting soil that I love to use is called BM7 and I get it from homegrown plants in Farmersville. Okay, I'm gonna start with one of the easiest seeds to sow. It is um, Echinacea or coneflower, and it is a white swan variety. And coneflower is a very simple um, seed to sow, and it does really well. And a lot of times you can just harvest from the flowers that are already in your garden and um, harvest the seeds from there. You don't even have to buy seeds. However, I'm wanting to start a bunch of this white variety, so I did purchase the seeds to get them started. These are sewn at about a fourth of an inch deep and I am going to start them pretty heavy by putting three to five seeds in each container. And one thing about perennials is they're really easy to divide. So even if all of these seeds come to fruition, which would be amazing, I can actually divide these up as seedlings and then um, get several more plants. And the reason I'm gonna do this method instead of um, giving you know one or two in each seed cell is I'm running out of room for all the seeds. I've, I think I've just been really seed happy as of late. So I'm kind of running out of space. And so if I start this direction, I end up getting two or three plants in each one. I can just divide them out and divide them into more trades in the future. But this will give me more space when I'm starting them in the beginning. These are sown about a fourth of an inch deep, so they do not want light. Um, they need darkness to germinate, and they will emerge in about 10 to 20 days. Echinacea and coneflowers are really great for uh, cut flowers, and they just do really well in the heat of the summer when nothing else is doing well in my area. Next, we're gonna start two varieties of Rebecca. The first one is called Prairie Sun, and I did start Rebecca from seed last fall and overwintered them and was able to get some early crops. However, those crops did um, end up uh, having issues with mealybugs and spider mites, so it was a rough season for them. But I wanna go ahead and start again uh, with them. Now these do need light to germinate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to heavily seed once again. And like I said, I can divide these up at a later point. So I'm gonna go ahead and heavily seed just like that. And there's probably like eight to 10 seeds in each of those seed cells. And I'm doing this once again to save space for myself. And then as they get bigger, I can divide them up. And I am gonna go ahead and press these down to make sure they have really great contact with the soil. I'm not gonna cover them up. Um, the only reason I would really cover them up right now is if they were outside and there was gonna be an issue with um, them blowing away and such, but since we've got these inside, they should be great right on their surface. And once again, I will bottom water these and all of the soil will get nice and moist. Now this Prairie Sun Rebecca is about 28 to 32 inches tall. It's a tender perennial in zones nine through 10. Best grown as an annual is what it's saying, but these did overwinter for me really, really well. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and give it another try. The next variety of Rebecca that we're gonna try is called a caramel mix. And these are about 20 inch tall, uh, tall plants. So they're a lot shorter. And I only have about 25 seeds. This particular variety is from uh, Swallowtail Garden Seeds. And let's see, it says that the germination is about two to three weeks. They do not need to be covered. So they do need light for germination. And I'm gonna go ahead and use all 25 of these seeds. And then I'm just gonna lightly press them into the soil to make sure that they have really good contact and then these will water from above. Okay, next I'm gonna start some scabiosin. I have grown these from seed before. They do take a while for the plant to begin producing. The first one I'm gonna start is Ephema White, and these are about 26 to 30 inches tall. They are perennial in zones three to seven. However, they overwinter for me. So that works really well in my opinion. Um, they need to be barely covered. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the seeds and I am going to heavily seed and I'm only gonna do about half this tray with the white. 
and I am going to heavily seed on each of these seed cells and like I said as they all start to sprout the ones that are doing really good I'll divide them up and get multiple plants out of them so I'm gonna go just like that they want to be barely covered so I am just gonna sprinkle just a little bit of soil on there In fact, I might go over the top of this with um, some vermiculite. So that is going to be the Scabiosa Fama White. And then the next one I'm going to do is the Scabiosa Fama Deep Blue. And this guy is about 26 to 30 inches tall as well. It says it's only a perennial in zones 3 through 7. I have found that it overwinters in my particular zone. And once again, it wants to be barely covered as well. So I'm going to heavily see each of these seed cells and the heavy seeding is very different for me typically I only do two to three in a um, cell but like I said I'm just trying to do take it a little bit of a different approach because I am a home gardener and I don't have a ton of room <laughs> in my house so let me grab some vermiculite and it, we're just going to sprinkle the vermiculite over the top of it just to kind of wake these down a little bit but also keep a lot of moisture up there at the top. The next one we're going to start is called Zulu Warrior and this is brand new to me and it's supposed to be it's winter hardy to zone six so it's actually supposed to be a perennial for me so I'm kind of excited. This is very different. It said it's a magnificent magnificent three inch single dahlia like smoky lavender flowers with dark purple centers bloom quickly the first year from seed atop three foot flower stalks which are heavily armored with spiky wing like modified leaves. Um, the silvery leaves can reach two feet in diameter and are covered in silky white silky webbing. So very cool. It's supposed to be great as a cut flower and great in dried um, arrangements. And the packet only has 10 seeds. They need to be lightly covered but they do need light for germination. So we are gonna be surface sewing these as well. And we are going to go ahead and sew all 10 seats. Now, obviously, I'm not heavily seating this tray because I only have 10 seats to start off with. But if I end up having even one successful plant, I should be able to harvest more seeds from that next successful plant. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with some vermiculite as well. I might hit all of mine with vermiculite, truthfully. All right, the next one is gonna be white glitter eryngium, which is like a thistle type of plant. And I've tried this many times and struggled. <laughs> It is takes 365 days for it to actually bloom, which is crazy to me. Um, it is about 40 to 46 inches tall and it's a perennial um, in zones three to eight. Excellent as a cut flower or dried flower. And it is about, did I think 40 to 46 inches tall? When we are sewing it, it likes to be surface sewed, so it does not want to be covered as the light will help with the um, germination process. The seeds are super tiny. We're going to go ahead and use all of them today. There were only about 25 seeds in the container, so I can do about three per seed cell. All right, and I'm just going to lightly press those down. This soil right here is a little moist. This is one of the reasons I don't like to work with the moist is because it just sticks to my, the seeds stick to my fingers when I press them down. So we've got that going right there. We'll go ahead and add some vermiculite as well. Okay, and the last variety I'm gonna be starting today is a Veronica, and this is called a sightseeing mixture. It is from a Swallowtail Garden uh, Seeds. This is a two to two and a half foot perennial producing extra long spikes of flowers in shades of pink, 
violet blue and white from June to August. Um, a big attractor for butterflies. The first, it's a first year flowering perennial, which is winter hardy to zone three. And this packet has 50 cells. Um, light does uh, a germination. So we're just gonna gently press these into the soil. We're not going to cover them with additional soil. And I've grown a lot of the uh, Veronica or Speedwell, um, as it's also known, that is from um, Proven Winners, and it always says really poorly for me. Um, so I thought I really would like to have it as a cut flower, so I thought I might go back to a more traditional approach, starting these by seed. Now these are tiny, tiny, so I am not going to be using my fingers to press these in because most likely they will come away on my fingers as specks of dirt, <laughs> specks of soil. So I'm just going to go ahead and work these right on top. A few more left in here. All right, just like that. I'm not going to mess with it. Because the seeds are so tiny, I won't be able to tell if I've picked them up on um, my fingers or not. So we'll top it with some more vermiculite. And vermiculite is not required. I have felt that since I've begun using it, I get better germination. And what it does is it soak up, soaks up water and keeps water and um, moisture right at the top, which is really great for starting brand new seeds. Okay, so at this point, it is time to start um, adding moisture to the situation. So these are my Amazon seed starting trades I, that I love so much. They are linked in my Amazon storefront below. Um, they have quickly become my favorite. And I'm going to go ahead and add water about halfway up in the container. <clears throat> and then just put my seeds in there and they will soak up the water. And then I'm gonna put the domes on for humidity. And I wanna make sure that my domes are closed to keep all the humidity in. Now for the Vigo seed starting trays, those are these trays right here. They will go into a large container. Um, that a kind of a reservoir to hold the water. I will not be ordering more Vigo seed starting trays because it, in realization they didn't come with their original container. I had to buy that. You have to buy all the pieces separately and it just wasn't really working for me. And I found the Amazon ones have held up really, really well and are much less expensive. Now I'm not getting rid of these Vigo containers. I think they work really great. I just found a better option for myself. I do think these Vigo containers are really good for starting things such that need a deep root system, such as sweet peas. All right, and I'm gonna do that. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just fill this up with water and allow it some time for these to soak up. Okay, I do wanna give you a little bit of update. Now, for those of you who noticed, this is my old seed starting station. And then at the beginning of this year, I started this situation over here, and I am gonna to continue to expand on this. This has worked really well as my plants have gotten larger, and I'm going to be adding an additional shelf here. And for those of you who aren't familiar with my space, this is actually my dining room. And I do all of my, a lot of my video and grow work and storage in here. This is my grandmother's antique um, farm table, which she would absolutely love that I'm doing all these projects on that because that's just so her um, as well. So this is kind of the space that I work in for all my seeds and when I'm videotaping for you all. And yes, I say videotaping because I'm old. <laughs> I guess it's called filming or whatever. Anyway, so here's um, my seeds over here. So I have a wide variety going. Over here we have some uh, lupin that is struggling with um, some spider mites that you can see underneath here. So I really do need to get in here and treat it a little bit. These are all my Bells of Ireland, which came up beautifully. This is a uh, Celosia seedling that does not need to be there. Um, Bells of Ireland are looking really, really good. 
These all are several varieties of Snapdragons, Potomac Lavender, let's see, Chantilly White, Madam Butterfly Ivory. This one is Bronze Butterfly. This one is Summer Lavender. This one is Chantilly Light Salmon. The Snapdragons are doing very, very well. Down here is a whole bunch of Tiny Tim Alyssum that's doing beautifully and actually needs to go outside and get planted. Um, right here, right here is a Delphinium Lilac Pink White Bee, and this was an experiment in that these, um, some of my Delphinium I put into the refrigerator um, to kind of um, have a cool stratification process, and then this particular Delphinium I planted directly in, and out of eight cells, we got four cells uh, with seeds. It's about 50% germination. This is more Snapdragons. This is um, Chantilly Purple. Oh, uh, what are you? Butterfly white with uh, butterfly blondes with uh, bronze with white and Potomac Royal. This is snap uh, straw flower right here. More snapdragons, Costa apricot and Costa silver. In the back, Costa silver did not have as good a germination, and for some reason, half of them are really short and half of them are really tall, which is very interesting. Down here we have some sweet peas. This is sweet pea, April and Paris. They really need to get outside. Um, and this is sweet pea, Mermaid Dreams. And then over here we have Lizzie Anthus, Voyage to First Love, which had great germination. And then over here um, we have Roseanne Black Pearl, which only had four germinate. And then I have a Roseanne Echo, or excuse me, a Lizzie Anthus Echo White, and only had one germinate from that. This is more Bells of Ireland. This is Foxglove and Foxglove Camelot Mix. Over here is Godisha. Um, these really need to get outside too. <laughs> and more straw flower over here. I have lots of stuff that needs to get outside. Over here are all my violas and pansies that I started for winter sewing. And these all need to be um, potted up. So they need to go to bigger containers. But they're all doing really beautiful. There's 12 cells in each of these little containers. So everybody's doing really good. I even saw one the other day. Oh yeah, here's one that actually had a little flower. So that's exciting. That one was cool summer. Violas. And um, they're all looking really, really nice. And they will be going outside in about five to six weeks. And then up here is the other Delphinium. These are the Pacific Giants. So you remember that I was saying that I put some in the refrigerator. These are the ones I put in the refrigerator. And I did have better germination on these than I did on the other variety. I would say about 75% germination um, on these. So they're all doing pretty good. And then of course, these are the new ones that I just laid out that we just started. Okay, so better late than never. <laughs> Like I said, I might not get these along far enough before I can plant them out for the winter, um, before the freezes come. The thing about starting things from seed and trying to get it out, trying to get it out in the garden before the winter hits, is you want to allow the little seedling enough time to establish enough of a root system to protect itself. Um, and so that's kind of the idea before that. And I don't know if I've given myself enough time on these. So if that ends up being the case, I have two um, solutions that I can go for. I can plant them out and then put um, some kind of terrarium, something or other um, a plastic on them to keep them warmer um, during times when we have uh, frost or really cold temps. Or I can go ahead and overwinter them inside under my grow lights and just have nice, beautiful, robust plants for early spring. So you can still go ahead and start them as long as you're willing to follow one of those other steps. Um, I keep all of my seedlings and my grow lights inside my house. I know a lot of people um, go out into the garage and do that as well. I'm just not wanting these to go quote unquote dormant right away before they've had enough time to establish some really great root systems, which are what and really important for perennials to survive throughout the winter and hot summers. All right, let me know what perennials you have started from seed or what perennials you have considered starting from seed. If you have any suggestions regarding the eight varieties that I started today, if you've grown them before, if um, some particular processes work better for germ 
extermination, let me know, share your knowledge. And that's one of my favorite things about doing this channel is learning from you all. I would say at this point, I'm probably learning 60% of everything I'm learning about gardening is coming from you all and your comments on each of my videos. All right, you all, as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up and be sure to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.